Hello everyone, I'm Apurva Popat again and I'm going to talk about why every physician should know how to search and up to date. Okay, and I have strong statements and opinions. You can comment um, in the section below and I want to know what your opinions are on. And my statement is every physician should know how to search and up to date. Every physician should be referring to up to date before prescribing anything and any therapy to the patient and actually my statement is you shouldn't be practicing medicine if you are not referencing up-to-date or any evidence-based uh, medicine tool right we are far from that era where we are practicing where we were practicing experience-based medicine that's long 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 time ago it's time for evidence-based medicine that's why this is my strong statement so if you're a medical student or if you're a resident please Try using up to date as early as you can. This is extremely important. And up to date subscription were very expensive, but they are not expensive now. So if you look at um, the up to date subscription, just you know, um, Google that and click on the Walter Walter Screwer website, and then let's say just click on the up to date subscription part. And depending on your country, let's say if I'm choosing United States, and let's say I'm choosing student or resident physician you would see the price around depending on the country you would see price around let's say two year price is four hundred dollars right that's two hundred dollars a year that's very very appropriate if you are in the united states right now or if you are a student or a resident in the united states most of the time usually medical school medical schools and institutions and the hospitals where you are practicing will give you up-to-date access um, so that's not a problem usually in the united states but let's say you are right now in uh, let's say india and uh, you want to start practicing evidence-based medicine and if you are a student or or a resident look at the price the monthly price um, for up-to-date 30 day is nine dollars and if you subscribe for two years that's 160 dollars that's 80 dollars a year not at all expensive not at all comparable to anything and if you think about caring for patient if you think about evidence med based medicine this is for you and you should be doing it okay now let's go to the up to date itself and i'm going to log in these are my credentials usually my institute gives um, me the access so let's go to the home page oh boy okay this is the home page so on the top you will see the blue bar this is the this is the clinical decision making bar so here you'll see contents and from the contents you'll see what's new practice changing updates drug information topics by specialty here you'll see calculators calculators could be any calculators let's say pressure ulcer risk stratification right if the patient is having pressure ulcers some anesthesia calculators i don't usually use up-to-date calculators i go to md calc for that drug interactions uh, section so that's the third one so if you, this is the home page of the up-to-date and if you go to the drug interaction um, section i use this every single time if i if i'm starting a service um, on an inpatient site or um, uh, or icu i always use this this up-to-date uh, drug interaction tool let's say if the patient is on amiodarone and let's say if the patient is also on uh, let's say ibuprofen which is unlikely in hospital but let's say patient is also on a pixaban and then you analyze you would see a pixaban and ibuprofen has has significant you know interaction let's say patient is um sent home and patient is also drinking grapefruit these are very very simple straightforward examples right you already know this but let's say amiodaron and grapefruit juice and amiodaron um, and atorvastatin and grapefruit juice is usually you should never give and amiodaron and grapefruit juice is cross you should never ever do that it's a contraindication right avoid com combination that's very very handy so i always try to do you know drug or medication reconciliation and check the interactions usually our pharmacy also helps with that but i always check on my side some of sometimes drug interactions would show us like qt 
prolongation stuff and we have to be careful and sometimes some some of the drugs would need you know adjustment depending on the renal function as well okay anyways let's say now you go to the main thing okay this morning i was um, seeing a patient who had chronic hypotension so i always um, think about uh, chronic adrenal insufficiency so i wanted to you know quickly check point of care this is point of care knowledge right this so chronic adrenal insufficiency i'm not interested in treatment right now because i have to make a diagnosis first so diag diagnosis so i searched that chronic adrenal insufficiency diagnosis this is for quick reference okay and then um you would see the results based on your search um search um, keywords and depending on the relevance let's say this is the first one diagnosis of adrenal insufficiency in adults if you if you look at here you'll have a tab um saying adult or pediatric patient education as well as graphics section I'm interested in right now diagnosis of suspected chronic adrenal insufficiency and if you click that you'll quickly go to the uh, this section and it will say okay if you are suspecting chronic adrenal insufficiency you should just go and check patient serum cortisol levels so I checked that and the cortisol levels were actually 12 so the results are indeterminate so it's it says you what's the next best step and the next best step here is perform 250 microgram ACTH stimulation test. So I'm going to order that now. And depending on the stimulation test results on how the response of pituitary uh, or adrenal gland was to the ACTH and, and adrenal gland and what's the um, degree of increase in cortisol, depending on that, you can make your diagnosis. So that's very, very important. So this is my point of care. Let's say I'm home and let's say you are, you know, first or second year or third year resident and you want to know in detail. So you click that and you can know in detail about um, the diagnosis of chronic adrenal insufficiency. And this is a sidebar which can, you know, give you the quick links. Okay, what if the test is like this? Okay, you can go here, you know, look at the special scenarios. If the patient has ACTH efficiency and so on and so forth but if i'm clicking any topic i first of all go to the summary and recommendation section and quickly read this part and if at all i'm i'm uh, confused and i want to read in detail then i would just um click this sublink and it would take me to that specific topic so first of all always go to summary and recommendation and based on that you can search or uh, in detail you can also use this search function let's say why should we do it in morning and it will tell you all the morning keywords and sometimes you'll be able to find uh, why exactly you know you should be doing in morning um, if you if you are you know uh, reading it correctly the next one is uh, the graphic section so if you click the graphic section you could you can actually look at the quick flow charts on uh, the diagnosis and the risk factors and epidemiology of that up-to-date section the other important thing um, which uh, i want to talk about is society guidelines so let's say what is specific society so go to the society guidelines and what is let's say european society of endocrinology saying about that in us i'm interested in about you know the united states guidelines but if you look uh, united states don't have um, you know or maybe this topic doesn't have uh, guidelines uh, from us so you can of, of course go to the european society um, guidelines of uh, adrenal insufficiency so this the guidelines are very very important so that 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 way you will know where these statements are coming from and usually the topics on the up to date are pretty up to date as the name um, says so like for example they would have authors section editor deputy editors here and the topic was last updated on august 28 2023 and the literature review is current so this is all current as um and as uh, latest as april 2024 so currently it's may 2024 and this literature is pretty up to date so that's uh, one uh, search section the final one is updated pathways uh, depending on your institution um, sometimes you may or may not have that access our institution doesn't give us up access to updated pathway but i personally have the access so you can actually look at the um, you know flow charts and say patient is having this factors history of heart failure uh, coronary artery disease patient is having hypertension what should be my first drug for hypertension um, so it will exactly give you whether you should prescribe amlodipine or chlorothalidone or whatnot 
And uh, finally, in the end, more you search, more CME points you would accumulate. And if you are in United States and if you are looking um, for uh, claiming your CME, you can just select those credits and select um, finally to claim your CME credits. Okay. So this is in a nutshell about up to date. I, I again am saying if you are, um, you know, practicing anywhere apart from United States, I, I highly, highly recommend you to check up to date. This is very, very important. Okay. Start practicing evidence based. This is for betterment and studies have shown institution who has access to up to date. They actually have, you know, better patient outcome and reduced mortality. So please, please get familiar with up to date. Thank you.